Having knowledge and information about things, such as the content of the writings of most church fathers, can be very useful, because he's getting into his discussions with Catholics and whatnot. However, most people study such things as an investment in the doctrines that they already believe. What does that mean? If you're a Calvinist, you study the church fathers to just find, to cherry pick it, to, and your salience landscape is set on Calvinism. And so you're really cherry picking the church fathers to find quotes that you can use to bolster your Calvinism. You really don't care about what Calvin, what the original, what the church fathers and the church babies and the church toddlers, you don't really care about what they believe, thought, or wrote. You just care about what you can use to bolster the egregore which has you in its control. The demon that's possessing you is commanding you to extract the validity. You, you're going to borrow the validity of the church fathers is what you're doing is how uh, – you know, Doug Gustafson might word it. You're going to borrow the, the validity of the church fathers by quoting them, name dropping them to bolster the paradigm that you have already committed yourself to. Now, it's you're going to do that if you're Calvinist, if you're free grace, if you're Mormon, if you're Jehovah's Witness, if you're provisionist, if you're Baptist, Methodist, Catholic, they all do the same thing. Because they are egoically committed to the paradigm prior to examining what the writings say. And they're they're not really exploring like if if just you know Justin Martyr wrote something or if Irenaeus wrote something, so what? All right? Maybe it just represents, you know, people think that it represents the earliness of a thought, but as we've exposed before on this channel. When it comes to earliness of thought, like how early the thinking was occurring, uh, we have Alexander the coppersmith, we have Demas, we have um, Hymenaeus and Philetus, we have Diotrephes, we have people in the Bible that were alive at the same time as the apostles who were believing, practicing, doing, and teaching wrong things, okay? So having a writing from somebody that, is really close to the apostles doesn't matter it doesn't matter how close it was to the apostles because it can be just as wrong as diotrephes or hymenaeus and philetus it could be just as wrong as those fools but the reason they do that is so that they can borrow power from those early guys to bolster the position that they're taking now now there is there could be some validity to that, but that's usually what's going on when people study the church fathers. Not really studying the church fathers, they're gleaning ideological buttressing from the church fathers. That's what they're trying to do. That's all they're doing. If you're idiot, that's the that's the only thing James White is is capable of doing. So having knowledge, okay, however, most people study such things as an investment into the doctrines that they already believe, with the assumption that finding confirming quotations from these writings will lend credibility, because they're looking for credibility and validation from the church father. Why? Ideologues and, you know, people with personality disorders and children need external validation because they have no internal validation. Their locus of authority is externalized. They need they need external validation. They have no internal validation. They can't see clearly. They need something to come from the outside. So they're finding, with the assumption that finding quotations from these writings will lend credibility to their beliefs, especially in a rivalrous dynamic. Like if you are debating, we just went to a debate Saturday night and Tuesday. I think we're going on Jason Breed's channel, Living Christian to review that video Tuesday. Me and Leighton and Alana and Jason are going to be reviewing that debate. So <clears throat> quoting the church fathers or like early church, I don't like calling them the church fathers because the church is supposed to be growing, which means that back when it first started, those are the church toddlers, not the church fathers or the church babies, all right? So we should be way beyond that now. But what, you, what we saw in that debate was people quoting the so-called church fathers to vampire suck out credibility from them to bolster the paradigm that they've aligned themselves with in 2024. 
so that instead of just being informed in a neutral way, like just reading what the church toddlers had to say, right? They are puffed up with all sorts of extra bias confirmation. They're biased toward Calvinism, toward provisionism, toward free grace theology, whatever it is. Doesn't matter what the bias is. There's not one bias that's any better than another. Having a bias is, not, is a problem. And this is only adding to their ego. And now when I say ego, I'm not talking about arrogance and conceit, even though it doesn't exclude that. I'm talking about the things that they are emotionally identified with and they treat it as if it's part of themselves. Like a, a Calvinist will say, I am a Calvinist. And then when Calvinism is negated, they get defensive in their body the same way that somebody, the same way that your body would react, that say you're on a hike in the woods and a poisonous snake appears right in front of you that you didn't see. Your body would start to react a certain way. Your body does the same thing when the things that you are attached to get attacked verbally, right? And so if you're a Republican and somebody is bashing the Republican points, you feel that and you want to argue and you want to argue a certain kind of health care. If you're a Democrat and people start attacking those points, you feel that defensiveness in your body. It happens in religion. It happens in politics. It happens in Dungeons and Dragons mechanisms. It happens in video game techniques. It happens with just about anything. Some What kind of car you should drive, whether you're Apple or Android. It happens with anything. People can become egoically attached to it. We don't want to be egoically attached to anything. Those things are not us. I don't care about if you want to, I have an iPhone. If you want to tell me that iPhones are dumb and everyone should have an Android, great. Tell you all, all you all day. It doesn't affect me at all. Okay. And, and vice versa. Doesn't matter. I'm not attached. I, I drive GMC vehicles and I happen, I despise the GMC company. I cannot stand the GMC company. I hate a lot of things about them. Oh, I just disagree. I don't hate them. I just disagree with their policies and interaction and with the government and all that and the unionization. And I think it's bad for the economy. But I like what it feels like to sit in their vehicles. So I keep buying them. That's just my ego is not attached. <laughs> my ego, I do have a preference for the other car companies, but I don't like their products. I like their policies. But I don't like the products, only adding to their ego, right? So if your ego, if you're egoically attached to Calvinism or provisionism, and you go back to the church fathers and you find a bunch of stuff that supports your belief, what that does is it adds to that egoic attachment. It bolsters it and makes it stronger. So when the Bible talks about flesh and carnality, that's what we mean when we're talking about the ego. You're actually making your ego bigger and stronger, more fleshly and more carnal by getting quotes from church fathers that bolster your paradigm, your chosen biased paradigm, your Calvinism, your provisionism, your free grace theology. You're bolstering your ego. So then instead of just being informed in a neutral way, they're puffed up with all sorts of extra biased confirmation, only adding to their ego and creating more rubble under which their authentic self is buried and needs to be ultimately rescued from someday. So like James White is out there, he's a Calvinist. Well, he's going to add Greek knowledge to his Calvinist ego. He's going to add the church fathers to his Calvinist ego. He's going to add a fake doctorate degree to his Calvinist ego, okay? He's going to add 127 debates to his Calvinist ego, right? So now if he ever wants to have a wake-up call, it's going to take a very huge ego death to get through all that rubble to get to him. And the likelihood that that's going to happen is very, very small. So you, you can't be a Calvinist or a provisionist and learn Greek and understand the Bible better, okay? Learning Greek will actually make you understand the Bible worse. And the reason for that is because you're paradigmatic and you're just going to use your knowledge. It's just another layer of obfuscation and post hoc rationalization that you can, like a pancake, fold back on top of your egoic identity and your paradigm. You see, that's what's happening. That's the problem. So learning Greek can help you understand the Bible better if you are non-paradigmatic when you do it. 
if you are paradigmatic, if you are committed to a particular set of propositions when you learn Greek, it is hurting you and preventing you from waking up. It is not helping you. If you want it to help you, you must become non-paradigmatic. In the Bible, the word is metanoia. It is repentance. When people say repentance, they're most often talking about some kind of moral repentance, but very, very importantly, there is also a cognitive repentance. You must come out of the type, the, in, the cognitive enclosure that has you entrapped and come out of that to the meta, metanoia, metacognition, outside of the paradigm, beyond the paradigm. You must have cognition beyond the paradigm or you'll all, all likewise perish. Whatever you learn, you learn the church fathers, you learn Greek, you learn Hebrew, while you're a good, strong, independent Baptist, you're making it worse for your future self, not better. You are not helping yourself. You need to become non-paradigmatic and then learn that stuff. And then it can help you. Can't help you while you're paradigmatic. Only make it worse to come out of the paradigm.